Thank you everybody for tuning in to Appetite for Changes TED Talk. My name is Nataja. I'm sitting here with three beautiful women um, who are going to introduce themselves, let you know who they are and what they do. If you don't mind about starting for me. Uh, my name is Ayanna Melander. Um, I go to North High School. I'm a senior. Um, I'm a student athlete. I'm a student journalist. I write for North News. So yeah. All righty. North News. We're going to get into that a little bit more. Yeah, explain yeah. what it is and what you do. Mm -hmm. You don't mind introducing yourself? Absolutely. I'm Georgia Four, an independent journalist. I also am the CEO of Black Press and Executive Director of Center for Broadcast Journalism. And my name is Aaliyah Demry. I'm currently a senior at St. Cloud State University. I'm also a student journalist, um, and I'll be ready to go in my career pretty soon here. All yeah. right, y'all. I'm looking for um, seeing both of you if it's something that y'all feel like y'all want to pursue. Um, but y'all all kind of spoke about like media journalism and all that. Um, if y'all don't mind just explaining why did you take that route? Like, mm -hmm. um, what in your mind was like, this is it? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, um, I knew I wanted to be a journalist from a young age. So I did like a school talent show and I always tried out for the talent show each year. And I never made the talent show. Like, I would dance, I would rap. I wanted to be a rapper, too. Mm -hmm. And it never worked. Um, but my dad, he had an iPad. He was probably, like, one of the first people in Minneapolis to have an iPad. So he had, like, Fruity Loops on there. And I would just, like, make my own beats. But, like, basically put together a mini package of myself talking. So I'm like, I'm going to put a skit together of me acting like I'm a radio host. And I tried that out for the talent show, my fifth grade talent show. And they accepted it. The crowd went crazy, and my dad was like, yeah, that's what a journalist is. So I didn't really know what a journalist was, but he was like, that's what journalists do. So ever since then, I'm like, I want to keep going with it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can go. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess journalism has been, like, all over my life, everywhere. Um, when my mom is the principal of North High right now, Mari Free Slavin, but when she was the principal of... Lucy Laney, Love Them First, the documentary came out. And um, there, <laughs> just cameras everywhere. I was, I was like <laughs> sixth grade, like what is going on in my life? Um, but I didn't really acknowledge it then. Um, fast forward, I'm in, I think like my eighth grade freshman year. Um, in between then, when um, the murder of George Floyd happened and me and my mom, we, I didn't know what was happening. I didn't have a phone <laughs> then. <laughs> just, I didn't know what was happening. Um, just in, at home, my mom was like, we have something to do. Um, so we went to um, Cup Foods early in the morning, and she just started praying. I'm like, what are you praying for? Like, I'm confused. You know, I don't know what's going on. And she tells me what happened. Um, we're praying. We get in the car. Then she sees an article, and it's a picture of me and her. Um, and when I read that article, everything just started like coming okay. together for me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all these like, like just all of this, the photographs, just the emotions from the photographs, because I felt everything, because I knew what it felt like, not knew what it felt like, but I was here, I knew what was going on. So I was like, I need to do this. Like, I need to do this. I need to bring justice where there is no justice. Does that make sense? It definitely yeah. makes sense. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, for me, you know, it's interesting because I actually um, majored in business. Okay. My first declared major was journalism, but I was kind of discouraged because women who I knew who looked like me said it was really difficult to break into the field. And so I was like, well, I don't want to take on all this college debt <laughs> and then I can't get a job. So I changed my major. I made it more broad. And I remember having to write a business plan before I graduated, and my business plan was to own a radio station. And through that dream of wanting to own a radio station, primarily because I loved music when I was young, and uh, back then it didn't really feel like there was a radio station that catered to young people. Mm -hmm. um, I know that we have radio stations, or we had radio stations throughout the years, but they kind of come and go. and then. Um, for our legacy station, they tend to favor like older audiences, right? <laughs> um, and so, but I realized, you know, after like getting into it and pursuing internships and moving through the, the career of um, 
broadcasting that I wanted something with more substance. And then also just like, it would be so expensive to buy a radio station. And with XM radio and podcasting, it didn't really seem like FM radio was a good investment for a business, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I fell in love through the pursuit of trying to figure out how would you even buy a radio station. I fell in love with being on the air and having community conversations and just what it can do when you amplify truth. It can agitate change. And so I did radio for like seven years, um, but yeah, like working in hip hop radio when you're going into like your 30s, <laughs> it just kind of felt like, you know, I know there's other DJs, there's nothing wrong with it, who are like 50 and 60 and they're still rocking the clubs. But for me, that just didn't, yeah. it didn't feel like it was my calling. Mm -hmm. And so I, I made the transition into news. Um, my dad actually had suggested it a long time ago and I laughed at him. <laughs> uh, but I really just fell in love with being able to tell stories and meeting people where they're at. And um, yeah, I just really started to see how transformative and powerful storytelling can be. Okay, so you kind of hit on something that I wanted to bring up. Um, you said it wasn't really a lot of people or people that looked like you said it was hard. Um, and so I believe you all identify as black women. Um, so being a black woman or a person of color, um, do you see that like it's a struggle or do you feel like it's becoming a little more easier to do what you want to do in the spaces that you have to do it in? That was kind of a yeah. lot. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'll say, so I am now an independent journalist and I own my own company, right? But that hasn't always been okay. the case, right? Like I started my company in 2020 after George Floyd was murdered because I just saw the stories in mainstream media that didn't really reflect the reality I was experiencing mm -hmm. here in Minneapolis. And so, um, yeah, it, it's still hard, right? Like that's actually why I started my own company because despite having worked in multiple markets, having two Emmy nominations, having 10 years of experience, having a college degree, even if it was in a different field, like I couldn't get hired here mm -hmm. in my hometown, right? And so, yeah, it's challenging to me. That was like a challenge that I couldn't break into this market, but I can get hired anywhere else in the country, right? But I want to be home and I want to serve my community with my gifts. And so I had to start my own company in order to be able to do that. And fast forward is like, it's a lot to do it on your own, but like our company just won two Emmys, you know? So it's like, but we are good enough, right? Like we, we do this with excellence, you know, maybe not the way that mainstream media wants us to do it. So yeah, it, it's been very challenging um, to be able to do this work. Okay, and I know Aaliyah, we kind of talked earlier, because mm -hmm. I was like, <clears throat> gonna get ready to be done with college, and I asked you like, what's the next move? And then you told me like, ah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, same with you, Georgia. Like, I definitely felt discouraged going through college, just kind of just hearing stories and then also internships and just been seeing what employers have been saying about what they're looking for. And it's like, do I fit that description? And it's like, I know a lot of companies want to have, like they got to have a certain percentage of diversity, but it's like, they really don't accept me for me. And I want to work for a company or be a part of a workplace where I'm fully accepted for my true authentic self, not just for their diversity percentage. Okay. So that's really like the main thing for me is I want to feel comfortable going to work every day and be my true authentic self. Cause I mean, that's why you hired me, but yeah. Okay. So what about for you? Um, I wouldn't say, I say it's half and half. Um, I'm in a program, it's called Black Girl Advocate. Um, and it's main focus is um, to like, cater to black and brown girls in Minneapolis and Minnesota and show them that there's more than Minneapolis, like for our lives. And so I've been like surrounded around like black business women, um, black producers, um, such and such. And so like with journalism and business, I feel like they're very connected. Um, so that's where I haven't really been like, not intimidated, but like, you know, I, I can't find the word. Yeah, it's, it's okay. We get what you're saying. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but 
I feel like what um, stops me or what makes me feel like, what makes my feelings weary is like, when I'm like, oh, like I wanna go to Mizzou. Oh, that does, they don't really cater to their students of color. Okay, well that's the best, like one of the best journalism schools in the country, like, you know, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to go up in the world, like, and it's just a lot of like the college question of journalism is very like, mm, well, you know, like they're not very diverse, like what you were saying. Like, you want, I want to be comfortable in college. You want to be comfortable in your workplace. So, yeah. Okay. Well, since uh, we kind of got, you know, like three different generations sitting at this table, um, is there anything uh, you two would like to share with her by her being in high school? Um, not gonna say recently, but it is still kind of fresh that you mean, is it any like tools or um, any tips that y'all want to give to her that y'all wish y'all had learned about earlier or just anything? Yeah, I would say like building off of what Aaliyah said is like, stay true to yourself, be authentic, right? Mm -hmm. And don't let external forces deter you from your heart's desires, right? Like when I think back to my younger self and the moment when I decided to change my major, had I have just stayed true to what I really saw for myself, right? Like um, maybe things would have been different, I don't know. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm at peace because I know all the things led up to where I am and I believe like I'm walking in my purpose. Mm -hmm. But I just share that to say like sometimes we doubt ourselves sometimes you know we're uncertain about like you're saying in mizzou, if you get to mizzou will they cater to you mm -hmm. um if you get in like just go in with confidence that even if they don't like you will still prosper mm -hmm. right and like all the things that are for you are for you and that there's nothing that anyone can do to like take that away you know and so if you see a path for yourself in journalism, like keep moving forward. And if you're knocking on the door and they won't open it, like sometimes you just Get like, <laughs> yeah, they won't give you a, a seat at the table, make your own. Yep, mm -hmm. bring that folding chair, bring it up yeah. to that table. <laughs> I would definitely agree. Um, really make your own lane. Like this is your best friend. Like mm -hmm. we're in a generation right now where everything is going digital and it's like, that's really the future and if you can show like that you're already there skill wise like some of those things won't even matter because you're already 10 steps ahead of other people because mm -hmm. you did what you needed to do for yourself so mm -hmm. I would just say keep making content whatever you like to do like put in the work like you say basketball players that go to the gym at 6 a.m. if you like to write write on your own, do writing on your free time, freelance, if you like to take pictures, take your own picture just for fun of your siblings, your mom, you know, mm -hmm. just do stuff that fits for your future and that's gonna prepare you for your future. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, that's, yeah. Yeah, so um, what inspires y'all to like keep going um, even when like these hurdles or obstacles get in the way, like, is it a person? Is it a thing? Like, what inspires you or who inspires you? Um, I would say it's my family and my community. Like, I have a big, what do they call it? A pack behind me. Like, a lot of people want to see me do so well. And it's just like, a lot of people in my family are not really where they would want to be. And I feel like even like my older family, I feel like I inspired them in so many different ways. And then just also seeing the reactions from people who I shared their story um, and like seeing what's came after that. It's like, I'm actually making an impact and I'm working, but it don't even seem like work at the same time. So just knowing that I'm actually making a change in the community, but also in my family as well, it's like a win-win. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. These two inspire me. Okay. You know, like <laughs> thinking about the future and like knowing that, um, man, we got to get it right so that it can be right for y'all. Mm -hmm. And so if I just throw in the towel, like what does that really signal to the women who come after me who want to do this work? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and, um, and then also because I feel like we've influenced this market by showing that there is a need for our stories to be told authentically, mm -hmm. we've influenced a lot of the outlets here to actually hire more 
people who look like us and actually tell our story. So I get excited when I'm, I'm scrolling on social media and I see, you know, one of these outlets has a story I'm working on and they got to it first, you know, like <laughs> that's how it's supposed to be. Um, but I know that 10 years ago growing up in Minnesota, it wasn't always like that. And right. so I know that what we're doing is effective and I know that the industry is moving in a better direction. And so, but we're not there yet. Right. And so like, I have to keep going so that like when it's time for you guys, like mm -hmm. there's other women to pass the torch to. Yeah. So that's what inspires me. Well, thank that's you. That's right. Yeah, look. <laughs> <laughs> Literally like, hey. <laughs> so what about um, for you? I feel like this is really cliche, but my mom inspires me because... Um, she inspires all of us. <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, I hear that a lot. But um, I feel like she inspires me because um, she's in education and I see... I'll, I see education and journalism like come together a lot um, in how you have to have the same mindset when you're teaching kids as when you're writing and you're catering to everybody. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, she's just very strong. So, yeah, she inspires me. All right. If it wasn't like for journalism or um, Ali, I know you do a little photography on the side too, you know, all that that kind of go into like I call it like media production. If it wasn't that, what would you uh, like to do or would have liked to do if this don't work out or if it didn't work out? <laughs> I know y'all won't go have no answer. Y'all like, this is it. it it's, it's gonna work. <laughs> um, now that I'm older, I would, I would want to work with like young people or do community work. I think like most of the stories that I like to report on has to do with young people or just things in my community. So I like working with kids. Like kids are dope. So yeah. Working with kids. Um, I would be in education. Okay. I, I feel like <laughs> I've seen a lot of it. So I kind of know my way around it. But yeah. You know, I, it's hard for me because I'm I'm so far out there <laughs> doing this thing a long time now. Um, and I have been at a place where I wasn't able to do this and I was miserable. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't know. I feel like even if I wasn't getting paid, I would still go out. And I've, I've done that. There's a lot of stories I cover that I don't get paid mm -hmm. to cover. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not like this is something I do for money or to make a living. Although I have been blessed and my gift has made room for me, there's a lot of times I show up and it's not about that. Um, but if I like honestly have to have to answer, because I know that's not technically answering, um, I would probably run for a political seat. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. I think that um, storytelling is effective in agitating change, um, but sometimes I get frustrated when I see things that are happening that are not right. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I think of Mel Reeves often, he passed away. He was a journalist who worked many, many years at the Spokesman Recorder. And he was an activist and a journalist. Yes. And it's really hard to wear those two, two hats. Right. And in um, predominant, you know, white led mainstream media, you could never do something like that, right? Mm -hmm. But he was able to do that. And um, there were times, especially, during the uprising where I really understood why he had that duality is because it's like you can only write and write and write mm -hmm. right. and film and film <laughs> and talk like you can only do that so much and it's like what's really changing right mm -hmm. like how many officer involved shootings officer killings Ooh. can you take can you report on before you just like it's telling the story enough Mm -hmm. exactly. So, yeah, I think if if I had to do something else, if I couldn't tell the stories or if I just didn't feel like it was effective anymore, I'd probably run for a political seat. Okay. I could see it. Yeah, me too. You could still run. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, y'all talking about, like, writing this stuff. I want to know, like, what's one piece that you wrote that, you were really proud of? And then like, what's one piece you wrote and you was like, ah, yeah, put it in the shredder. Or a story you covered that was like, ah, not that good, but I wanna hear about the good story first. That like really made you proud and, yeah, if y'all could remember. 
Well, for me, as a, I'm more of a visual storyteller. Okay. Every now and then, I'll <laughs> go on a tangent and write an article, but uh, visual storytelling is really my platform. A story I'm very proud of is the piece that we did with a woman named Delcia Perry. Her son was incarcerated for nine days and died due to uh, lack of medical care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we were the first to actually like tell her story. I think a lot of people looked at the fact that this was a man who was in jail mm -hmm. and um, in their mind, they kind of like criminalized him and dehumanized him. And so there's a lot of people who had that kind of bias and framework when they were approaching it. And mm -hmm. so we were like, no, like, he was someone's son. He was someone's father. Like mm -hmm. he deserved to get yeah. medical treatment. And yeah. so she actually released um, all of the footage. So like nine days, like 24 hours of tape for nine days. Mm -hmm. And like looking through that was so difficult because you could literally see his, um, his mobility deteriorating over the course of nine days to the point where like he couldn't feed himself. Um, he fell out of a car one time when they actually did take him to the hospital. Um, and then they wouldn't take him to the bathroom, you know, so it was like all these things. But the reason why that story to me is one of um, the ones I'm most proud of is because it actually led to change, right? Like the doctor who had the contract, he, um, he lost his license. The, and I think he lost some of his contracts too because he had a whole bunch of contracts across the state of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And then um, she was able to get a, a law passed as well on behalf of her son. Yes. And so just to see like telling the story made a difference. Mm -hmm. To me, that is, it just, it feels good to know like you're a part of helping to, to bring forth justice for a family that has been wronged. Right. Okay. Yeah, I remember uh, hearing about that story. Yeah. So thank you for covering it. Um, for me, it was kind of another tragic story. It was about this young boy. He he was killed by a family member because there was a um, like a gun in the house, and this was I was it was during an internship, and this was the first time I was ever called to go out to like something right after it happened, like breaking news. Um, and I had, I was doing like a lot of digging on Facebook, trying to find the family. Cause being a journalist, it's kind of awkward. Like you gotta be a stalker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I found his auntie and like, we grew a really nice relationship. Like that was probably one of my favorite sources. Like she was, and it was, it was a difficult time. Like she just mm -hmm. lost her nephew and another relative. So, um, when I went there, they did like a, uh, a memorial, a mural, like when they let the balloons go. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was just like really emotional. And I was so scared because I didn't really know where my place was going to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and still having to ask people questions Question. during that time. Mm -hmm. But they were so like open to me. There were other news outlets there and they were not feeling <laughs> them. But just because I built that relationship with his auntie and like I was understanding, like I wasn't bearing over them. Um, I guess it, I would say that was one of my favorite stories because it kind of took me to the next level of introducing me to something else. Um, that's more of like breaking news, but it was just really emotional and it was hard for me too, like mentally, like I still think about it all the time. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one story I'm really proud of, I did a, um, a summer program at St. Thomas um, at their 360 journalism <laughs> program. <Twins>. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, they assigned, they would assign us stories, give us a week to do all the research on our own, and then we would have an editor at the end of the week who would just like walk through everything with us. Um, and so I got assigned a story. It was about the underrepresentation of like Native American um, doctors um, and everything, and then how like Indigenous people don't have that much that that many resources um, for healthcare. And I was like, um, like this is not like I'm sorry. Like I don't don't really know about this already. Like you know I wasn't very um, comfortable, um, and it really um, it made me reach out and made me like get out of my comfort zone. It made me, cause one thing I hate about journalism is you have to like 
you have to like kind of poke at people to get what you need <laughs> and like I hate doing that and so I had to do that a lot because I didn't really know a lot about the subject um, and I'm really proud of it because I think like I think I did really good okay. and so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you think more people um, around you became aware of? Yeah I'd say um, because my mom's like, and it's in the Star Tribune, so you're getting a you're getting a copy, you're getting a copy. <laughs> and I got a lot of questions like, and how did you get um how did you get this, um, what is it called? How'd you get this doctor to say something like, yeah. <laughs> what's his name? Is he on Lake Street? Like this. Was, so yeah, it was just very like, yeah, I got a lot of questions. But. Okay, y'all ain't gotta talk about the bad the bad story. I just wanted to get y'all to think about that one good because <laughs> I know a lot of times. Um, we always could talk about the negative and it's yeah. kind of hard to talk about the positives and uh, talk about what we do that's positive. And so mm -hmm. that's why I threw that in there. I knew one none of y'all going to answer the negative, but it was just, I just felt like I was thinking. talking so long. <laughs> Mine was so long. I was just like, no, I think you know. it's, you know, it's what's needed is what needs yeah. to be heard. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I chose y'all to come here and have this conversation with me. Um, Y'all talking about being journalists, you, you got to be a stalker. I'm a stalker. <laughs> I stalks people. I hunts people down, especially when I see, you know, the good work that's mm -hmm. being done. Yeah. And although you, you know, you in the camera a lot and you're telling these stories and you and you, you know, writing it, y'all don't always get that opportunity to take a break, uh, reflect and, you know, brag about yourselves a little bit. And so this is what this was really about, just to. Um, get y'all at this table, have this conversation, talk about who y'all are, and let the world know, you know, really who y'all are, what y'all do, and why y'all do it. Um, so I want to thank y'all for being here with me today. Thank you. Um, sharing this space. I really love, like, how we got this, like, intergenerational connection going on at this table. And you brought up St. Thomas, like, 360 program. I know a lot about Aaliyah. She was in our youth program. So I, it seemed like I know her whole life, but Aaliyah went through it as well. Mm -hmm. Stalk your page. You went to St. Thomas, yeah. you know? <laughs> and so just like having y'all at this table and seeing these connections. And a lot of times, you know, we show up in this community together, but we don't always get that time to really yeah. talk and make these connections. And mm -hmm. so again, thank y'all. Um, if y'all like to share anything um, with us, or um stay tuned you know <laughs> i'm gonna get i'm gonna get as big as her someday so <laughs> yeah, look, that's, you know, that's what i was gonna say yes. and just you know what i do I, i'm not in you know media field i don't think i can go in it as something y'all be like I, if i go into media i'm gonna be in jail okay do it right now right. Like, 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 right. Yes. But, you know, covering the stories i'm like me in jail <laughs> i think i forgot what i was gonna say <laughs> Oh, doing the work that, you know, um, I do, um, it's all around food and, you know, uh, food activism, but sometimes when I take this hat off, I put on my community active, uh, active, activator, agitator. I like to be an agitator. <laughs> I like to agitate people because, like you said, you put these stories out, it agitates to change. I like to agitate people to make them think. Um, but mm -hmm. doing this work, you know, it's really hard um, and... Sometimes we need to see other people that's doing something a little harder to keep keep me going. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm really grateful for y'all. Um, stay true to yourselves, like y'all said. That's where I was going with it. Open these <laughs> doors that they continue to close. Bring those chairs to these tables that they continue to try to keep us away from. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, you opened the door. Got two young ladies that's following behind you, not telling how many more that we know. I'm on the sidelines stalking and watching, <laughs> you know, because that's just what I do. But for you all, even where you are now, um, continue to break them barriers, Thank open you. them doors, um, keep reporting on these stories uh, because we need it. Y'all some really dope people, and I can't wait to see y'all names Thank as you. I'm going on. So I can be like, ooh, I was sitting at that type of window. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Thank y'all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome.